We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood by your grace. We are a holy nation set apart for you. You have called us out of darkness, out of darkness into your marvelous light. You have saved us from the darkness. We rejoice in your power and might. We rejoice in your power and might. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. So today, Monday, is the first uh, day we're in... uh, we're broadcasting the daily masses of uh, St. Mary's at St. Mary's Ottawa YouTube channel. Okay, and uh, uh, today also uh, Deacon Marcus is joining me, and uh, uh, he will be preaching uh, today uh, at this mass. Okay, so I'd just like to welcome everyone who's uh, joining us uh, at this mass here at St. Mary's through uh, this YouTube channel. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. May the power of the Holy Spirit come to us, we pray, O Lord, that we may keep your will faithfully in mind and express it in a devout way of life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then Paul said, Into what, then, were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Paul entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him as smoke is driven away. So drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, 
let the wicked perish before God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. But the righteous, let them be joyful. Let them exalt before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leaves out the prisoners to prosperity. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, I am leaving the world and am going to the Father. His disciples said, Yes, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things, and you do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. We're drawing to an end of Jesus' final discourse with the disciples at the Last Supper. And Jesus is continuing to prepare those closest to him for what is about to come next. He foretells that they will be scattered and go their own way, giving them yet another warning not to leave him. And Jesus also once more speaks about the world. He declared that, in the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. And this is what I want to focus on here with you today. Just as it applied to the apostles, it applies to us here and now. Notice that, that Jesus didn't simply suggest that we may have trouble or that it might be difficult. No. Jesus once again declared that to follow him will mean we should expect trouble. To follow Jesus means trials. It will mean persecution. It will mean difficulties. And this is not something we need to go looking for. If we're living our Christian faith fully, we should expect pushback. We should expect trials. We should expect difficulties. Why? Well, when we are baptized, we are ransomed from darkness. We are ransomed from sin and death. We are ransomed from the kingdom of the enemy and established as adopted sons and daughters of the one true living God. The victory has been won. 
That is what we continue to celebrate in this Easter season. Christ is victorious. Death has lost its sting. And while we are liberated, while this victory has been won, the enemy continues to pillage, he continues to plunder, knowing that his time is almost up. And we know that there are three main enemies that we need to be continually on guard against. The world, the flesh, and the devil. This is not to say that everything in the world is evil, nor is it saying that our bodies are evil. On the contrary, God created us in his image and his likeness. And God created the world and called it good. But when we speak about the world and flesh as enemies, we speak in reference to the fallen side of it, the depraved side of things which lead us away from God back to sin and death. You see, the victory, although it's already been won, the world, the flesh, and the devil, they want us to believe that we're still prisoners. They want us to believe that Christ was not victorious, that whatever bondage to sin we may be experiencing, whatever difficulty or trial or persecution we face, they want us to think that this trial has a final word. But this is a lie. When you look at the church in the world today, and I realize we have viewers all over the world watching these masses, and, and with that comes different experiences. But do you ever look at the church and wonder if there could be more? If there should be more? I do. To be honest, I, I think about this a lot. I think often as Christians, as Catholics, far too often we can look like a defeated people. I think we look like we have given up we look like a people who have forgotten the victory of Christ. We look like a people who are lacking the courage which Jesus today exhorted us to have. But like the apostles, when, when Jesus was arrested, when people don't like what Jesus and the church teaches, we compromise. We flee. We flee from the difficulty. And the world continues to bring forth different agendas, different ideologies, which directly contradict Jesus' teaching and which directly contradict natural law. And as a church, we need boldness to resist. We need courage to face opposition and to stand up for what we believe in, to remain with Christ and not to flee, to stand firm in the pillar and bulwark of a truth, the Catholic Church, recognizing that the world has already been conquered. Alleluia is our song. But how do we do this? The trials and persecutions, they're increasing. The ideologies, whether in regards to marriage or gender or religious freedom, they continue to corrode and eat away at society and the church. We've given up so much ground in the skirmishes of society. And what we need, what we need, I'm convinced, is a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need the courage and fortitude which only the Holy Spirit can bestow. And every year we, we pray for a new Pentecost. We pray for this new outpouring of grace. But do we believe it? Do we believe that the Holy Spirit can and that the Holy Spirit wants to give us a courage that is not simply some emotional experience or us pulling up our bootstraps, but a courage and boldness which will allow us to have this eternal perspective and the grace to face the world knowing that the victory has already been won. The church the church cannot operate without the Holy Spirit. And so often we, we act as if we've never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. We rely on ourselves, and then we wonder why things aren't working. We let the church become this worldly institution or a historical society. We forget that God wants to run the church. He wants to run my life. He wants to run your life. And there's a Holy Spirit who dwells within every baptized Christian, do you know, do you know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? And that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And we're approaching Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit rushed upon the disciples in the upper room, and as they were locked away in fear, we need a new Pentecost to awaken the church once more. Father Bob Bedard, who's the founder of the Companions of the Cross, he often said that the Catholic Church is like a sleeping giant. 
I believe that it's time for the giant to wake up. I believe that it's time for us once again to proclaim the victory that's already been won, the victory which should fill us with the courage needed, the courage which allows us to go forth, to proclaim in boldness, to liberate those in bondage to sin, those in bondage to death. And we cannot do this alone. And thankfully, we don't have to. And so I invite you to prepare for this Pentecost in perhaps a way like never before, to prepare yourself and implore the Holy Spirit to, to fall afresh upon you and the entire church with a new boldness, a new courage. Let us be renewed in the spirit of our minds. Let us give no opportunity to the world, the flesh, and the devil to rob us or to rob others from the inheritance promised to us through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit renews people, people like you, people like me. And through people, the church can be restored and in turn, the world transformed. So will you join me? Will you join me in giving God permission, giving God permission to move in new power and new ways, to transform our lives and the life of the church? And if we do so, if we give God permission, we will find courage we need not only to face this day, but every day down the road, because we know that through Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Having overcome the world, Jesus sent the Spirit to help us in our trials and in our mission to witness to Him. Let us pray for strength and ask His aid in our needs. That those who suffer persecution may have the courage to be faithful to their convictions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are tempted may overcome their weakness through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who consecrate their work, profession, and business to Christ may receive the strength to fulfill their duties in a Christian manner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who are ill may experience the healing touch of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy the radiant dawn of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of this Mass, for the, the intentions of Alex Golub, offered by Margaret Golub. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also remember uh, at this Mass the eternal repose of the soul of Rudolf Goring, the father of Mark Goring, who passed away last Saturday. So please include uh, the, the repose of his soul and also for comfort and consolation for Father Mark and his family right now. Almighty Father, you can do all things. Grant that we may use your power in all that we do for your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here am I. Send me, Lord. In my weakness, I know you will be strong. Here am I, empower me. Stretch out your hand to heal the sick. Stretch out your arm and set the prisoners free. Come fill me with mercy. Send me out to heal the brokenhearted. Come fill me with boldness. I will speak your words of life I will go in your authority Here am I, 
Send me, Lord, in my weakness, I know you will be strong. Pray, brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this unblemished sacrifice purify us, O Lord, and impart to our minds the force of grace from on high, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself, from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, excels in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Terence and Marcel, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis facem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him. King of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure We should call him Lord Who from the beginning Was the mighty word in your hearts and throne him there let him subdue all that is not holy 
all that is not true. Crown him as your captain in temptations are. Let his will unfold you in its light and power. Jesus, Lord and Savior, shall return again with his Father's glory o'er the earth to reign. For all wreaths of empire meet upon his brow, and our hearts enthrone him, King of glory now. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Marcus, for a wonderful homily. And uh, you yeah, talk about the, the importance of uh, the Holy Spirit in our life. Okay? And uh, as I've said, this, this coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And uh, so here at St. Mary's, we're doing a novena to the Holy Spirit. Uh, if it's your first time to hear about it, uh, you could still join us, okay? Uh, so it's from 3 to 4 p.m. Um, uh, Eastern Daylight Time here in Canada, Ottawa. And uh, so it's at, at, uh, here at the St. Mary's Ottawa YouTube channel. So even though you missed the first few uh, novenas, uh, it's okay, you know? Uh, if you have time, you know, if you want, you could go back and watch it. But if not, just, just uh, catch up with the prayers, uh, to the Novena, uh, to the Holy Spirit. And uh, the most important thing is uh, the Lord knows that you are willing and your intention is really to, to do this Novena, even though if you miss one or two or whatever, the Lord honors that. You know? and, and through Mary, uh, through Mary's intercession, uh, we're going to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so join us uh, uh, for that, for the Novena. And also on Saturday evening, we're going to have a Pentecost vigil wherein we invited uh, Father Roger Van Den Acker, the General Superior of the Companions of the Cross, the community that Deacon Marcus and I belong to. Uh, he's going to give a talk, and the, the theme of the talk is why do we need the fire of a new Pentecost today? Okay, he's an excellent preacher. I'm sure uh, you would love to hear him speak. Okay, so join us this Saturday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, also here at St. Mary's Ottawa YouTube channel. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And with our Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We are to take your light to every nation, tongue, and tribe, so they may see your glory shining through our lives. You have called us out of darkness, out of darkness into your marvelous light. You have saved us from the darkness. We rejoice in your power and might. Yes, we rejoice in your power and might. <laughs>